Clarita here, and I've got a new sponsor, DistroKid. If you want to release your music into the world, DistroKid's the easiest way to get your music into all the major streaming platforms, unlimited uploads, and keep 100% of your royalties. And because you're a Design Freaks listener, you get 30% off. Go to distrokid.com slash VIP slash Design Freaks. DistroKid. Welcome to another episode of the Design Freaks podcast, where we talk about music industry, art, and design. We're talking record covers, graphic design, music history, and design history. I'm Clarita, and I am your host. This is episode 44, and it's the end of the year, 2021, and a it's sort of a tradition on the show. I don't know if it's a tradition. I've done it. It's the third year. (laughs) Um, and I do a yearly wrap up episode, so that's what this one will be. But this year, I wanted it to be more sort of forward thinking, positive, and share some great news and some recommendations. So, I'm going to talk about a really exciting announcement about the new edition of Paul Gorman's book on Barney Bubbles, and of course, he was the designer for Hawkwind. Stiff Records and lots more. I did an episode on him early on. Also, want to recommend another pre order book. Um, this one's all about new wave graphics, and that was recommended to me by a few different people. And then finally, I want to kind of highlight some recommended album designers and a type foundry to follow into the future. <laughs> Uh, So first, thank you so much for listening. Um, If you enjoy the show, please share it with other vinyl and design freaks uh, and leave an iTunes review. And thank you for those who already have. Um, I also want to thank, oh my gosh, all of my guests from 2021. What a year. Uh, It's so hard to book guests. Um, People are very busy. It's not a negative complaint or anything, but it is difficult to uh, make that magic happen. So when it does and I'm able to talk to someone and share their stories with you, it's absolutely incredible. Um, I am forever grateful for everyone who's been on my show. And this year, I kicked off the new year with Jesse Lortz. I talked to Matt Most of Cold War Kids, who's also a designer, uh, the Deadbeat Film Society podcast for my soundtracks episode. <laughs> Rick Pelletier from Six Finger Satellite. What a dream come true. Oh my gosh. Greg Smith, aka Radjaw, Josh Manderville for the posters up, Roy G. Biv, John Burnson, uh, my amazing sister Melissa, Sunny K. Wow, incredible. Um, and the always hilarious Byron Wilson from Singles Going Steady Records in Seattle. And then finally, Victor Melendez. So thank you all so much. Uh, And if you haven't heard those shows, listeners, you got to check them out. And I have lots more fun interviews and more fun stuff planned coming up in the new year. Uh, You can find everything at designfreakspodcast.com. You can contact me there and you can shop. There's a, uh, some new merch up. I made some decals. And so those are the first designs and there's more to come. And for more music related podcasts, check out ruinousmedia.com. Okay. So here's my first recommendation. Huge, huge, amazing news. Oh my gosh. An essay written by me. And listen, I'm not, I don't consider myself a writer, but I am extremely passionate about some things. Anyway, an essay written by me is featured in the upcoming book 
The Wild World of Barney Bubbles by Paul Gorman, published by Thames and Hudson. This is one of the best art and design book publishers in the world. And I mean, you know how I feel about art books. I feel like I'm constantly talking about art books. But yeah, this is the new edition of the out of print book, which was called Reasons to be Cheerful, The Life and Work of Barney Bubbles. That was published in 2008. And I've talked about that a lot on the podcast. I also used it as my one of my main resources for episode four. I believe pre-orders are available for just the book by itself through Thames and Hudson's website. But however, there's another collector's edition that is so cool. If you're a Hawkwind fan or a New Wave design fan or Barney Bubbles or you're just into rock and roll or just tarot cards, I mean, it is so exciting. It's so cool. In addition to the book, A Box of Bubbles, that's what it's called, is, yes, the revised and updated edition of the book with exclusive cover design, an essay by American designer Clarita Hinojosa. <laughs> so honored. So weird. Um, and 16 new pages of rare material together with five specially recreated pieces of Bubbles memorabilia. So you're going to get cloth-bound box with screen printed design, signed by the author, numbered and limited to 500 copies. And in the box, the collectibles include, listen to this, the Galactic Hawkwind Tarot Card Pack. Okay, the, these are 21 cards, and it's not the traditional Major Arcana. It, this is all created by Barney Bubbles. And it was originally designed by him to promote the Hawkwind album, my favorite, X in Search of Space. And so picture a full fold-out ad, printed advert in the paper. And, oh, I did write down before which paper it was in, and now I don't have it in front of me. But um, the, the 21 tarot cards were arranged on the page to form a hawk, and you cut them out. Pretty cool. So excited to have them. You also get the hanky panty handkerchief, <laughs> and that's a promo item for Ian Dury, and also a do-it-yourself sticker. That's the Ian Dury record. Um, also, you get build your own silver pyramid and the self-assembled geodesic dome. Both of those were originally designed for and included with the Glastonbury Fair record from 1972. And that just has ton, it has a huge poster. It's got all these inserts. You can have these two amazing interactive pieces. That is so incredible. So yeah, the pre-orders for that are available now at vol.co. And there's going to be links in the show notes and my website and my Instagram bio at Design Freaks Podcast. And I, I recommend checking out vol.co. It's, uh, it's a really cool landing page. I believe you can access the book information just right from the homepage. And that landing page is really well designed. It's beautiful and it has a lot more info. And you can see several of the book spreads, um, more of the work. And uh, yeah, great work by the web team there. Uh, and so how, I'm just going to veer into a little story here. How did this come about? Well, for new listeners uh, who may not know, the fourth episode of this podcast was my Barney Bubbles episode. Um, and because his life and career, I mean, there's just so much to say. Um, so in that episode, we mainly focused on the early years. Um, I still want to do a later new wave focused episode and I'm still putting that together. But for this one, we focused on early career, family, um, stuff about his dad that's very telling, um, his early obsessions, school at Twickenham, Friends Magazine, Teen Burger Designs, the Conran Group, and then Hawkwind. So, I mean, that's already so much to talk about. Um, and that episode features me and Brian Standridge, who was my guest, who's a local Seattle musician. Um, and anyway, Brian is the reason that episode came out so great and why it's so fun. Uh, and then, you know, after that, I've spoken about Barney Bubbles quite a bit on my show. I'm guessing that's where the idea came from to have me contribute. And I know that the other editions have featured humongous 
designers uh, writing essays about Barney Bubbles, like the biggest in the biz, Peter Seville, Malcolm Garrett, um, also featured a foreword by Billy Bragg, um, who Barney Bubbles famously, famously designed for. Anyway, Paul contacted me. He wanted to include the perspective of someone working in more of a digital space and somebody maybe of a different demographic. I'm American. Um, I'm a Mexican lady that's a very unlikely super fan of Barney Bubbles. But, you know, um, he asked me to touch on how Barney's work remains relevant in our current, like, digital world. So that's what I attempted to do with all of my heart. And uh, it took me a lot of days, and I cried a lot. And I re-listened to that early episode, and I looked at my early notes, and it was an emotional don't want to say journey, but I guess that's what it was. (laughs) But anyway, um, I included some quotes from the podcast. um, And so big, huge thank you both to Brian Standridge and an otherworldly and cosmically undefinable thank you to Paul Gorman. And, you know, I won't believe it till it's in my dirty little hands. And I am so excited to see it. I hope you are too. So yeah, the other book that I pre-ordered Uh, which I think is available now. So if you order it now, it should be shipping soon. Um, It's called Reversing into the Future, New Wave Graphics, 1977 to 1990. And that's by Andrew Crivine. And I guess Andrew has just this insane collection of um, original posters, flyers, artwork, memorabilia, Um. Yeah, just all kinds of stuff. And he, um, in 2011, curated this uh, gallery show called Rude and Reckless Punk Post-Punk Graphics from 1976 to 1982. And that was the first New York exhibition of punk and post-punk graphic design. So that's weird that it really, that was the first one. But yeah, so this book is kind of like his new wave collection. And it's, I haven't seen it yet, but I mean, it seems incredible. The cover work is designed by Malcolm Garrett, of course, from the Buzzcocks, and Chip Kidd, who is a renowned book cover designer. Um, Yeah, and it documents the incredible impact of New Wave. And uh, this is the idea, it says here, uh, this is the ideal book for diehard music fans and graphic design aficionados alike. Uh, artists, you know, the bands inclu- uh, included are like Duran Duran, The Cars, Elvis Costello. So Barney Bubbles is involved. There are Simple Minds, Malcolm Garrett, uh, Gary Newman, Japan, Blondie, Talking Heads. I mean, just so many. And um, the graphic artists featured Martin Atkins, Barney Bubbles, Chris Martin, Morton, Malcolm Garrett, Alex McDowell, Tony Wright. Lots of male names. <laughs> But also Devo Inc., Neville Brody, The Design Republic, and more. That's another good one. Another 2022 recommendation. And then here are my, uh, speaking about the future of album design, here are some, I guess, my designers to watch or designers to follow. Um, I really love Alicia Gaines, and her work is uh, at, it's on, I, I follow her on Instagram at dialogue underscore dub and just incredible work. Uh, she mostly does design. It looks like for her own band and her band is called Ganser. And she's kind of like me where her, she doesn't have one type of style. She's kind of like a design fan and, and an experimenter. And so I love to see her take on like the newest fonts and old uh, you know, throwback retro stuff. It's really cool. And then at Robert Beatty art, I'm constantly recommending. I mean, he doesn't probably need a lot of press, but I just want to say, if you haven't heard of him, um, he's, he just does this incredible eye popping sort of airbrush style. What I'm assuming is digital art, but it's also really hard to tell what the hell it is. Um, which I love. Uh, designer and art director D. Norson, and they are at at D. Norson underscore design on Instagram. Um, I really love 
the grungy, gritty Xerox DIY uh, sort of feel, but it also, there are some clean design elements to balance it too. So, and, and really bright colors. Like you can't tell when it was designed. Is, is that new? Is it from the 60s? Sometimes I see old album covers that look like something someone would do right now and vice versa. So it's one of those sort of lost in time designers that I can really appreciate. And then I always, always love Trevor Tipton 234. It's just psychedelia, reverse Xerox, just gorgeousness and masterfully done. And then finally, I wanted to recommend a type foundry. This one's called Foundry Volclair. And that's spelled V-O-L-C-L-A-I-R. They all look very clean and very modern, but they run the gamut from like very intense, geometric, sharp graffiti to drippy, drippy psychedelic, but also very clean, very contained um, typography. Uh, A lot of these are pretty out there. I only see like a few I would use on a regular basis, but they're still very, very cool. And the prices are great. There's a lot of it's in French. So I can't tell what kind of license this would be. But yeah, 25 pounds. I mean, they're 25 euros. That's pretty good. Um, And really, really creative and very cool. Uh, So anyway, that is my wrap-up episode. That was a mini. Um, I will be back in the new year with a full episode. Thank you so much, Ruinous Media, for your patience with me. I've been very busy and very distracted. Um, There's been a lot happening, and I hope everybody out there is doing okay, too. Okay, so I wanted to end this episode, though, with a quote. And this year we lost Ken Garland, who uh, was just one of the design pioneers and uh, wrote the First Things First Manifesto in 1964. And I just wanted to read this quote. We have reached a saturation point at which the high-pitched scream of consumer selling is no more than sheer noise. We think that there are other things more worth using our skill and experience on. There are signs for streets and buildings, books and periodicals catalogs, instructional instructional manuals, industrial photography, educational aids, films, television features, scientific and industrial publications, and all the other media through which we promote our trade, our education, our culture, and our greater awareness of the world. Goodbye 2021. Thank you for listening. I love you. Thank you. Stay weird. Stay cool. Don't take any wooden bitcoins.